Seems as if no formal introduction is going to be necessary. And welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast filmed in glorious Scrapple Vision and encoded with blast processing. We chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay per view by pay per view. Falcho Road is stuck. Welcome inside our Fallout Shelter number 101. It's your Irish ink spots. So, uh, the crooner's synonymous with Fallout. Here's some songs using Fallout by the ink spots. I don't want to set the world on fire. Your boy, Jay Hunter. It's all over but the crying, Mr. OSC. <laughs> <laughs> You do. And address unknown, V1. <laughs> <laughs> what the crack? Power down your pit boy. Break open a bottle of Nuka Cola because it's OSW 101, the debut of Warrior on WCW Nitro. And it's coming up right now. Welcome, Noggers. Eh? Eh? Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Fuck you, YouTube bots. Oh, no, goddammit, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> Happy days! He's a hurricane! Pah! Oh yeah, how is it going, V1? It's going great, mate. I can't wait to talk about this. This is something that, you know, you've read about for years, and now gonna get to watch the bollocks. Oh my goodness. And OZ, how are you, sir? Yep, same as last time. Which was? Uh, middling. Gruntled. Yeah, <laughs> gruntled. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, amazing work at Ryan Probear. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam Anime, fantastic work on the intro, guys. Of course, how does Ryan feel every time we slag his name? <laughs> he hasn't blocked me yet. <laughs> he, so. The guy is awesome, he's so fucking yeah. talented. But every time you say his name, we're like, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, he's OSW's composer. He's raising funds for his wife's life saving surgery. She's needs cranial surgery donate a tenor or more and i'll send you the full tracks of the music he's done for us including the osw version of cuphead final fantasy the osw 100s watchman watch penis <laughs> and more um, ourselves ryan and ray would be so grateful link and more info in the description get well soon Ray. yeah jesus best of luck they've raised about like just over half so far and it's like holy shit you know, we like I've, I've said it time and time again uh, that I think we have the best fans out there. People have really, really rallied behind Ryan, just like they really rallied behind Kev. Uh, you guys are fucking amazing. I'm blown away. Blown away. <laughs> you know, one day we're going to have to do that movie. Uh, what's the name of it? Blown away. <laughs> Is that the name of yeah. it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes, the beautiful 101, your crash course in wrestling bollocks, kicking off our five-part Ultimate Warrior in WCW arc. His debut on Nitro, August 17th, that's tonight. War Games at Fall Brawl 98. Warrior's one and only film, 1993's Firepower. Tagging with Sting on the October 12th Nitro. And finishing with the infamous Halloween Havoc 98 versus Hulk Hogan. Fucking yeah. Solid, solid, yeah. lads. Yeah. But before all that, let's get you up to speed with an ultimate warrior retrospective. Ultimate Warrior Retrospective 1959 in a small town of Crawfordsville, West Central Indiana, a young Jim Helwig was born. 
In his 20s, he discovered his love for bodybuilding and could be the next Gary Stridham. <laughs> wow! In 1985, he met Sting, who went to the same gym and asked to be his tag partner. The two jacked, charismatic dudes found work quickly in Jerry Jarrett's Memphis Fed as Justice and Flash, the Freedom Fighters. Oh, I love it. It's so cheesy. Slams him in the center of the ring. Jim just kind of drops David Johnson out in the center of the ring. Here's cover. Count is one, two, and it's over. The Freedom Fighters, Jim Helwig and Steve Borden, an impressive debut here on Championship Wrestling. The following year, the duo joined Bill Watts UWF as the Blade Runner, Rock and Sting. Yeah. Who were, to be generous, Road Warrior ripoffs. Even though they saw some success as Monster Heels, Helwig realized there was more money as a single star and split from Sting and the UWF. Landing the spaceship in world class in June 86, he was rechristened the Dingo Warrior. Nobody knew what a dingo was, the name just sounded cool. They just knew that it ate their baby. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go out, we're gonna give it 110%. The dingo is mad! Adding the face paint and tassels, his persona and look was coming together. Still had the uh, blow-dried cane phrase and the moustache, mm -hmm. though. Yeah. The moustache is such a weird look for him, it makes him look 10 years older. Mm. Load up the spaceship with the rocket fuel! A year later, Vinnie Mac got wind of this beastly ball of brute energy and snapped him up the summer of 87. Initially still the dingo, his finalised iconic look was formulated, but needed a name change. Hawk and Animal were the road warriors, Kerry Von Erich was the modern day warrior, Helwig would be the ultimate warrior. Between his full pelt running entrance, the high energy rock music, his look, dispatching opponents within seconds, an insane shouty pretty nonsensical promos, the Ultimate Warrior was a smash hit, becoming an incredible fan favourite. Part good fortune, part unstoppable charisma, the Warrior would become IC Champion at SummerSlam 88, squashing the then 454 day champion the Honky Donk Man in a mere 27 seconds. That's familiar music from that! Will you give me a speak to me warriors? Speak to me warriors. It's Robbie Brown, isn't it? Speak, speak, to, speak me. to me, will you? You're not schnapple. Warrior moved up the ranks, besting ravishing Rick Rude, and by summer 89, entered a feud with Andre the Giant, culminating at the Survivor Series, eliminating him and becoming the sole survivor. Helwig's peak was yet to come. Hulkamania had run wild since 1984, that's over six years now, and Warrior was tipped to be Hogan's successor. The two biggest stars in WWF had a confrontation during the 1990 Rumble, and fans went ballistic at the thought of the two biggest babyfaces having at it. And so it was written, and so it was done. Champion versus champion, title for title, fan favourite versus fan favourite, the ultimate challenge at WrestleMania 6, 53,000 crammed into the Toronto Sky Dome to see the showdown of Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Fall. No way, that's Batman. Yeah. The fall! Put the career into a nosedive, Hulk Hogan! Sounds like an old man. Yeah. Kinda was. <laughs> <laughs> the warrior was victorious, embracing his fallen foe and triumphantly raised his two titles and position as the new number one. Sadly, due to a confluence of factors, as champion he'd have to have longer matches, exposing his ring work, not being as charismatic as Hogan, and a lower quality of feuds and booking. Creative frustrations and money disputes came to a head and Warrior left after SummerSlam 91. That's where he held Vince up for more money right before. Mm. Helwig returned the following WrestleMania to rescue Hulk Hogan, but round two with the Warrior quickly lost steam, despite having an awesome Papa Shango feud that never went anywhere. Uh, I can't believe people look back on that Papa Shango thing as being a bit shit. No. Awesome. He was like spooting his head out with the marmite yeah. treacle. Yeah. Oh, come on. It was, it was iconic. Yeah. And then me and Gene got the goo coming out of his hand. And then there was the bit where Warrior was like puking at ringside. Like this was top quality stuff. Yeah. yeah. I understand that there comes times in everyone's life when they may regret certain things. That regret certain things that they should this yeah i know i don't know what the to say i didn't say nothing to the goddamn kid i understand that 
Warrior was gone again before he could even appear at the Survivor Series. Out of the WWF, Helwig legally changed his name to Warrior so he could use it outside Vince's jurisdiction. Was Warrior his Christian name or his surname? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like Cher. Oh, oh, so he just had yeah. one name? Yeah. Okay, okay. Not Jim Warrior, you know. Jim Warrior! <laughs> <laughs> or is like Prince changed his name to the symbol. The squiggle, yeah. The squiggly wiggly. This is like one step above that, so at least he's made, you can say it. Yeah. So you, you give him that. If he changed his name to the logo, oh. the Warrior logo. Oh, that's like... Everyone has to get new keyboards now. <laughs> <laughs> out of the WWF, Helwig legally changed his name to Warrior so he could use it outside Vince's jurisdiction for his comic books and wrestling school. Resulting lawsuits traded back and forth for years. He is back! The Round three in the WWF came in 1996. This time he looked more unrecognizable, noticeably slimmer and a haircut, giving birth to the unquenchable rumor that the original had died and he was the imposter. Hilarious, it's the renegade. That's so embarrassing, like that's so insulting as well. Uh, which was false, of course. He was just off the roads, you know, or on off, so yeah, less He's still on them, Slightly, yeah. slightly <laughs> less <laughs> roads. That'll be good. After no-selling Triple H at WrestleMania 12, he started no-showing events and was shown the door by July. Like, he just came in for WrestleMania. It is with great reluctance that I announce the indefinite suspension of the Ultimate Warrior. This suspension is a direct result of the Ultimate Warrior's failure to appear, as advertised, last weekend in Indianapolis, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. Now that's the one where Jerry Lawler calls him out and he runs out and he has the cap and uh, the pony, the ponytail. Jesus. The samurai cop. Because oh, he's like, you're going to get this picture smashed over your head. I better wear a cap the first time, you know. <laughs> Go, you know, fucking lead plated cap. <laughs> like, what a coward. Yeah. Well, <laughs> He didn't care, but he would have gone backstage and people would have been sniggering. Do you but know what he care. should have worn and it would have been brilliant? Remember those uh, German um, soldier hats from like World War I <laughs> with a little spike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a f***ing work. Apology. It's a work. WCW puts yourself to total Self-destruction! <laughs> oh, it's a bit Shang tsung -y. That is that. Your soul is mine. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was Vince's fault. Maybe he just couldn't harness the raw power and nonsensical energy of the warrior. WCW president Eric Bischoff felt he could. Back in 1995, there was no formal kind of effort to bring in the warrior. They just tested the waters with the renegade. So what, what, what would you think about him coming in here? And Hulk Hogan was like, yeah, yeah, bring him in. Come on, we can do something. Bischoff signed the former WWF champion in May, and WCW would be in WWF's backyard, Hartford, Connecticut, in August, which leads us to tonight. Nice. It is Monday night, and you are looking live in Hartford, Connecticut. Waka waka, hey! Panky porn music kicks us off as easy Eric Bischoff flies in. Fuck yeah. Heel Hollywood Hogan flexes as he's flanked by the measuring stick of the NWO, Giant, aka Big Show, and the disciple, Ed Leslie. Yeah. Gimmick number 18 of Ed Leslie's 18 gimmicks. I actually think that he looks great here. He Amazing. Like, he looks like a different human. He kind of looks... <laughs> like, like <laughs> doesn't so he know? insulting. not let's say man anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like someone who could batter you. Like, he looks like a tough guy. Thumbs up. I just want to point Shredded, out, yeah. I was watching a VHS. The live broadcast, yeah. The live broadcast version. And on this one, uh, Hulk Hogan did not come out to... He came out to Voodoo Child. <laughs> That's a great fucking oh, tune, uh, by the way. So Steve is watching the live version that was broadcast back in 1998. I'm watching the WWE Network version. And OSC, you are watching the Oral 9... O or A L E? Orale? Orale! The Orale! 77 redub, undoing WWE's audio tampering. 
So you're watching the best of both worlds. Oh. oh. So you're watching a lovely HD version with the old songs. Yeah. I think you know what that's all about. That's Hollywood Hogan. The only live professional wrestling program on the air tonight. Is how does it ever work? Listen, look at that. Look at the people. Stand up. From all these black and white NWites that still live in the house that Hollywood built, brah. Hulk Hogan in-ring interview. It's as if Hogan reached through space and time to greet us, for going, brother, he says, for all those NWOites that still live in the house of Hollywood, brah, <laughs> brah. Huge heat from the crowd. Huge pop from me. I love Hollywood Hulk Hogan. He's my favorite heel in wrestling. That's what I was going to actually ask. Like, Hogan cuts, whatever, three or four or five fucking promos on this <laughs> one episode of Nitro yeah. alone. And it was absolutely fine. But was he such a great heel because he was, people could never see him or imagine him as a heel? And when he was saying bad things, people were taken aback? Or was he a great heel promo? Bit of column A, bit of column B. They're only breaking kayfabe now, so, you know, 96 onwards. And that was a huge slap in the face for him to turn heel. You know, that was an ultimate betrayal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know Hogan is a shoot heel. <laughs> <laughs> like, he is not a very great person. Um, but I think you can make the argument that he's the greatest babyface and the greatest heel that pro wrestling has ever seen. Probably by killing, you know, dozens of other wrestlers. <laughs> yeah. his, but, you know, it still did it. I'm calling Goldberg out. This is the house that Hogan built, bra. <laughs> no more games with the media. No more games with those preliminary chumps back there. I'm calling out you, Goldberg. I'm like, oh man, you just buried the whole roster except for one wrestler, mate. Oh, yeah. Shoot heel. Yep. Also, just want to point out that Hogan lost at the pay-per-view eight days earlier. Road Wild. So it was himself and Bischoff taking on uh, Jay Leno (laughs) and DDP. Hogan lost and then comes out the next night and cuts a promo saying how he's the best and no one can beat him and he can beat anyone and he's coming for the belt. (laughs) I'm like, you're coming off a loss, mate. You know, there's something going on. I do love that, though. Um, By the way, Jay Leno, although it did do a larger rating, he cost a lot. So Bischoff was just saying, yeah, roundabout broke even on it. Okay. Like ratings didn't bump or anything, you know. That's a shame because like Leno's obviously not an athlete, but what he was good at was like taunting Hogan, like you know he like putting out his big massive chin and be like, "Go on, take a shot." The fans really, really bid on that. So I am shocked. I, I imagine buying that pay view. Imagine like Jay Leno's in the main event. Oh my god! I cannot. That, that did a decent buy rate. Yeah. 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 Insane. He hot dogs and sets up the main event. Top babyface and WCW champion Goldberg puts his title on the line against NWO's giant. Because when you're on Hollywood NWO, you're on Hollywood for life. Short and sweet, then as is WCW tradition, post-promo promo promo talking into the camera. (laughs) Yeah, I quite like it. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. because that's what would happen. Just my time's in. I'm like, I'm still talking. Yeah, like like, I'm just. It's a bit more natural. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like. When as soon as you press stop on on our mics, we we don't just get up and walk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we still exist. Goldberg, you're gonna crawl like a dog at my feet. It's WCW Monday Nitro, August 17, 1998, from the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, where WWF hosted WrestleMania 11, episode 97. Literally WCW's first time to Hartford to debut one of WWF's biggest stars, clever. 12,655 in attendance, with a whopping 5 million people tuned in to TNT at home. Commentators tonight are Tony Schiavante, that's what Hogan calls him, on play-by-play. Iron Mike Tenay for the technical schnuff. For hour one, you've got the leaser of Larry Land, it's Larry Zabisco. And for hour two and three, it's legendary Bobby Heenan on color. Mean Gene Ogerlin's on the ramp with J.J. Dillon, who lays some sneaky groundwork for a big debut later on, making note of Hogan's comment that there's no one he hasn't beaten. (laughs) 
And because War Games isn't complicated enough, two teams, two rings, double-sized cage, Fall Brawl's War Games will have three teams. Three teams of three, NWO Hollywood, WCW and NWO Wolfpack. Uh, what do you think? I would imagine back then people would have been like, three teams of three? What the fuck? Come on, mate. That's like, a third better. You get a third <laughs> more. The value. <laughs> but obviously now, modern day, NXT does war games every year. And I believe for the past two years, they've also done the same gimmick where it's three separate teams. Nowadays, it feels fine. But at the time, I mean, like, it's so simple. Like, the booking of this match, you have heel and face team. The heels get the man in first so that they're always on top. And then you get the pop for the baby face coming in. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, I don't know how this is going to work. But we'll find out next show. Mm. Hollywood Hulk Hogan will, te- will be the captain of one team. That's going to be the NWO Hollywood black and white. That's correct. Mean Gene, he is a pro. He reiterates and confirms J.J. Dillon's announcements. Like, he's J.J.'s trust like, safety net. Good yeah. stuff. Wasn't J.J. Dillon at one point charismatic? one of the mouthpieces of the four horsemen yeah he's so bad what happened to him you know he's gone full nick bockwinkle on this um he yeah, like, really bad he's a bit better than bockwinkle but he's definitely in that area yeah. so the mind gene is already starting to go i mean I- splicey of this week's mug root beard nitro party fans send i love this fans send in their vhs tapes of their nitro watch along parties and the best one gets shown on tv what a fantastic idea i really like uh, goldberg he was having a great time like him i mean he looks happy yeah so you know that's something isn't it Mm. Uh, finish with the macho man oh yeah oh yeah that he's not the kool-aid jug (laughs) the macho man oh yeah no no. (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah and then we get our first taste of ring announcer dave penzer I, I think, because I can't really hear him because his mic's never plugged in. He, so you're getting the arena audio? I watched Road Wild and I watched last week's Nitro and I watched this Nitro. And he's never on camera. So I wonder if that's like him saying, uh, like, I'm, I'm a bit horrible looking, so keep, <laughs> keep me off camera. <laughs> and I tell you, remember, fans, we got a grand prize Nitro party coming up in a couple of weeks. Dave McMichael <laughs> versus C. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> versus already in the ring sick boy who's winning this uh, oh we last saw mongo wrestlemania 11 as part of lt's crew where he got a mega reaction slotted in great vince wanted to sign him wcw offered him more so here he is sick boy is one of raven's flock pretty much named jobbers any feeling about uh, sick boy's ratty cut off jeans looks wrong Raven has the jorts. Yeah, yeah. You, that's what you need if you're gonna be kind of grungy. This guy, I don't know what the look is. Doesn't he have like a tank top on at one point or the whole time? He strange. He looks like what you would think Raven's bird would wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're spot on. You, yeah, you fucking nailed it, Steve. Sick boy with a slow whip to the corner. Shit, drop kick. Another slow whip to the corner. Stop getting Mongo to run. <laughs> <laughs> and hey you want to take a suplex trying to pick it up again here look at trying to pick this big man up fuck no botch land to the ground what the fuck was this because he flopped to the side and also i was like whoa i think awful sick, sick boy is like let's do the move oh god you're not doing the move i'll try my best to bring you down safely holy shit I could barely get him up that time but did a darn good job at least executing something that time that's it let's wrap it up <laughs> okay but stop let, let me just paint a picture for you okay imagine in your mind's eye here goldberg's spear okay his size his strength former nfl player like mongo beast of a man who kind of sprints and mows down opponents flattening them you know he's like a panther like a rhino a gorilla a massive hunk of hone muscle <laughs> barreling towards you and taking you out now here's mongo He's like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> the whoopsie doodle. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, whoopsie whip to the knee area and sick boy takes a bump. Tease Goldberg's jackhammer, but no, here's a tombstone. It's like, oh, why would you give dangerously under-talented Mongo the tombstone? Give him the responsibility of your neck to not break it? Yeah. Oh, it's all right in the end. Sick boy, rest in peace after 4.42. Right in the end zone, he did. One, two, three, it's over. So that's like a 
touchdown. What do you think, mate? Not very good, but watching Mongo was fun. Yeah. What do you think? Um, identical. Yeah. I can't handle the shorts either. You know, the Simon Cowell shorts. They're supposed to come up to a sternum, but obviously they're hanging down. Like, I'm sure they're uh, they're actual NFL authentic shorts, whatever. I'm sure that's what they wear in the NFL. Well, underneath their care. jocks, like. Oh, yeah, they wear long, don't they wear long yeah, yeah, yeah. trousers? I don't know. Where did he get them? Did he cut off some of his NFL? Sh- anyway, can't handle them. I don't want to see them again. <laughs> I won't look at them again. <laughs> Okay. Um, I won't look at them again. I will only look into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of four pro of the war games, welcome Captain Diamond Dallas Page. Mean Gene interviews Diamond Dallas Page. WWE Network doesn't pay for his Nirvana theme, so we get in and in, 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 which is so we get a rip off of a rip off of a song. Oh, what? Oh, this is not the the actual theme. So, the actual song, jing 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 yeah? DDP's jing 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 Then, normal song, ding ding, ding ding, DDP's, ding ding. That's the best. That's the best. Jimmy Hart, you've done it again. <laughs> because I'm fairly sure that in like music copyright, when it goes to court, they don't even listen to the song. They only look at the sheet mm. music. That, yeah. And so this would be legally different. Yeah. yeah. The WWE don't pay for Jimmy Hart's version. They have their own version. So it's slightly farther away. It's like... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> DDP drops another hint towards tonight's debut, saying Hogan's never beaten him. Check the history books, he's 0-1. and one. Of course, alluding to WrestleMania 6, Hogan Warrior. That's next month, what about this month? DDP's still salty over the NWO, beating him up before his US title bout with champion Bret Hart. Uh, he starts talking, and like, geez, you know the way you're cutting a promo and it's towards someone else? You usually have to wait 40 seconds, a minute, for them to come out. He just says, yeah, yeah, something about US champion Bret Hart. Bret Hart pegs it to the ring. He's already, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> he does not wait for his cue. Even his run-ins are real. You know? Everything with this man is real. DDP gives us a Hollywood scum Hogan, and Brett gives us a the WCW. You know the WCW? You know I've come to the WCW. I'm in the WCW. Disrespect the WCW, because I came to the WCW to be the best world champion the WCW has ever had. (laughs) You know something? He did say the WCW. Suck it up and learn like the rest of us. You either win or lose, and that's the price you pay in the WCW. Brett lambasts him for making excuses, reciting a laundry list of guys he's beaten, punctuated by the only reason Lex Luger's not dead somewhere is because he stings friend. Is that like a shoot that you're uh, you're, you're banging the drugs out of? Smack bag like? junkie, yeah, yeah. That's a bit mean, all right, isn't it? <laughs> it is shoot yeah. mean, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But that's a yes, we're on for a US title match tonight. Benoit, crippled at home because of me. Booker T, crippled at home because of me. And the only reason Lex Luger's not dead somewhere is because he was Sting's friend. Please welcome to Connecticut, Raven. Raven interview, WWE Network dubbing in his second WWF theme from volume five. So, uh, does it like 30% less? Caw, caw, caw. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, do you want to give us the breakdown of this theme? So, this uh, <laughs> <laughs> Raven song here is the uh, legally allowed version ripoff of Nirvana's Come As You Are, which is boo doo 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 right? And then this one is. It's so similar, but the like timing is kind of weird. It's like do 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 do. Yes, perfect. 
<laughs> you did it brilliantly. So yeah, <laughs> legally, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Horace bumps into Gene. He's like, me and you? Oh, Jesus. Um, he picks a bone with Raven, wanting another match. Raven nonchalantly and eloquently acquiesces to his request. As long as it's a tag bout. Raven and Saturn versus Horace and Canyon. Apparently you can book your own matches. Oh, aha! Uh-huh. JJ Dillon sneaks a pee. He pops his head in and says... Yeah, grand. Uh, no DQ, only pinfall and submission. Give us a clean finish, please, lads. Terrible segment. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. But I do want to point out that I love, even if it's only for five seconds, that the suit pops out his head and goes, the match is on. Because yeah. one of my pet hates with like modern day Raw is like Randy Orton talking to Braun Strowman and well, not anymore because he was sacked. But, uh, you know, like, I don't like you and let's settle in the ring. The wrestlers book their own matches and I think that's bullshit because, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense. That would never happen. So yeah, just have someone pop out their head and go, you've got it, the match is on. Uh, what if that person is Teddy Long though? Are you, st- you still want that to happen? Tell you what, if he's behind the camera and so at the end of the segment he just pops his head in and goes, Hello. No, he has to come out full team. I want him out there for 10 minutes. He can't Bret Hart to the ring. Just No, no, pew. and he's dancing. I want him dancing. Are you, holla, you're holla, going holla. for that, are you? Fuck, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you're a dickhead. <laughs> Match number two, High Voltage versus Disco Inferno and Alex Wright. The latter is a perfect pairing as they're two dancing idiots. High Voltage, Robbie Rage and Kenny Chaos, aka I've no memory of these lads. His name is Roydy Rage. (laughs) (laughs) It's fucking brilliant. Um, Wasn't High Voltage Matt Hardy's old gimmick name? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's also a Linkin Park B-side. They debuted 3rd June 1996, jobbing to Sullivan, my son's faces of fear struck it big by being part of the lads battered by the nwo november 1896 struck it big <laughs> then went on a whirlwind tour losing to harlem heat losing to the steiner brothers losing to mongo and jarrett losing to public enemy and are now good enough to feud with disco inferno and alex Wright. wow commentators immediately stop paying attention and start hot dogging we're live tonight unlike the competition and if we say there's a world title main event tonight we'll deliver not a one minute bout you'll see elsewhere the fucking cheek because goldberg meng was in the main event last week and it went two minutes 15 seconds and it was <laughs> shit <laughs> that's a lot longer than 10 seconds that's like what thousand percent more fifteen hundred percent more <laughs> so that like what match on raw would have been seconds long oh, i was like stop check raw august 17 from des moines iowa taped main event was a gauntlet match where val venus took on every member of kind Tai. final segment is what they're probably going for uh, it wasn't promoted as a match jr literally says it's not a match it's a confrontation between stone cold Steve boston and the undertaker and wcw spin it into hey one minute main event see what a time to be watching wrestling, though. Amazing. <laughs> Would, so wouldn't you fun, just yeah. have been loved to have watched this live and flick between the two? You can oh. totally see why people flick back and forth. Yeah. and like <sighs> Amazing. Yeah. Mm. By the way, that's the badass segment where Kane is wearing the Undertaker's jacket and attire so he can Pearl Harbor Austin. Because at the time, Undertaker was a bit flabby, but I don't know if he's injured or whatever. It doesn't look great. Kane looks awesome Jack. in it. And it's like, right, you're never doing that again, mate. <laughs> <laughs> looks way yeah, too well. I order you to get a belly. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that segment finishes with Austin throwing Kane into a hearse, but Taker was in the front seat and he drives off to Highway to Hell. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. It depends if you have the VHS or if it's Highway to Hell. Otherwise, it's The Undertaker's like 1998 song. I'm it's weird. on a freeway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moral of the story, Shivani, you're full of shit, mate. 
Obviously, Bischoff told him to say it, so we can't really blame Shivani. But we can. <laughs> hey. Uh, by the way, High Voltage here, sporting silver with a smidge of blue. They're quite fittingly a zero bar. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah. Caramel peanut, almond nougat covered in white chocolate fudge. The bar itself is white. That's the gimmick. Huh? In ring. Hello, disco. Hello, disco. Broken up with a flying nothing. Then Meng comes to the ring. Finger bang chokes fun boy. <laughs> Match is thrown out and he starts attacking everyone. Tongue and death grips all round. No contest to in 2.45. Did you notice the way that tongue and death grip, it looks like he's motioning for a kiss? How, how do you mean? Like it's like stroking their chin almost, you know. Come L- here, you lovely. lucky, lucky lady, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And like, and like Eskimo kiss. Like, <laughs> and he batter us. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Like, yeah. yeah, but we're never going to meet him. So Also, ding, 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 ding. Now keep talking. Ding, 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 timekeeper guy who won't stop ringing the oh, fucking bell okay. yeah oh god it's really not- tna used to do that which is why i think it was the same guy <laughs> <laughs> he was a twofer with dave panzer the- yeah they, yeah. they head hunted a timekeeper <laughs> i mean they pretty much hired half of the company right yeah, yeah so you know it's like who's better to make our new wrestling tv show the guys who killed the last one <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, sorry, what were you saying about Meng? No, yeah, like basically Meng had to come out and batter people because he got absolutely destroyed last week by Goldberg in the main event. Absolutely jobbed out by him. Also, his hair. Lads, what? can't take anyone seriously with <laughs> hair like that. Like, I know Meng is widely regarded in the world of wrestling to be one of the toughest men who's ever wrestled, but he's got like a brillo pad at the front of his <laughs> hair and this fluffy poodle thing at the back and he just doesn't look like a tough guy like he looks like someone who works on a beach somewhere selling yes. you like coconut sandals milk or shit, sandals like yeah like a giant armpit yeah <laughs> Or obviously is a nothing match. Favorite spot post match was blow dry official pepper sprays man. <laughs> yeah. He whips out of his purse. <laughs> <laughs> Who no sells it? Uh, it's his hairdo. It's this voluminous quaff. Like his hair is is a helmet. You know, a hermit. It's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? Do you like him there? It looks all right, Jay. Like. When you put the two of them beside each other, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a bit of uh, Eddie Guerrero's theme there? Oh, it's very Duck Arcy. The old Marmite song. Yeah, it is a bit. Scheduled for a matchup here against Conan. We talked about that. We talked about that. Eddie Guerrero in his travel gear, a black shirt and jorts, and brings his luggage wheelie bag with him. I did like the authenticity of bringing a suitcase down with him to the rink so nobody could shit in it, though. That was clever. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, production, don't cut my mic or I'll say my piece on some other show. You've got no Latino accent. Damn. This is the first time... I know he's done promos before this. This is the first time I've ever heard him with his legitimate accent. I didn't know that he had an American accent. Hey, production! Don't even think about going to a commercial. If not, I might go say my piece at some other show. Yeah, that's right, Eric! Do I got your attention now, Eric Bischoff? Eddie's frustrated at not being able to get WCW president Eric Bischoff's attention and cuts a shoot promo blaming Bischoff sorry sorry I think you meant shit (laughs) (laughs) we'll get there blaming Bischoff for being held down and his career stalling well it's a bit of a giveaway that it's a work shoot and not a shoot is when instead of saying I don't give a shit you say I don't give a you know what and he must have said you know what probably six or seven (laughs) times in this promo 
Yeah, that's not when you're very angry. You don't say, yeah. "Ooh, oh, I'm gonna kick you in the you know what." <laughs> Eric Bishop, <laughs> you can stick it up your you know what. <laughs> no, Eddie, come on, mate. <laughs> It's quite a serious plight and a legitimate concern, but his promo is so rambly and unfocused that he actually loses the crowd and they start chanting, <laughs> Eddie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he stumbly fumblies and eventually gets to the finish line with a cool visual. He throws a cup of coffee on himself to save Bischoff some time. I don't get the reference. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Neither did anyone in the crowd. <laughs> because even though there's the internet, they're not uh, not everyone in the crowd is a smart mark. Almost no one is. But this references a legit meeting that the two had a couple months back where Eddie said, hey, I want to leave. And Bischoff threw his coffee at the wall and some of it splashed on Eddie. And then everyone in the back was like, oh, do you hear what happened? Do you hear what happened? And it kind of built up into this whole other thing. So it was a reference to that, which nobody knew. Uh... So... I had briefly looked down when he threw the coffee on himself and then I looked up and I was like, oh, you clumsy idiot. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, nobody is going to think otherwise. Maybe he was trying to set up a feud with Kane. Oh, genius. Oh, yeah. <laughs> genius. It must have worked then. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Eric Bischoff, you can take this job and shove it up your you-know-what. This is probably his first kind of big chance to get people to care about the man Obviously, people cared about the wrestler because he's brilliant. And I think he shat the bed. I thought I, <laughs> it was so lame. Obviously, they're like, well, Brian Pillman got over doing the same thing. So obviously, if we do it again, it's going to work again. And I was like, um, I think you're forgetting that Brian Pillman was fucking brilliant. Yeah, one of the best promos. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? He was electric and he made it work. And this was clearly fake and lame. I thought this was very bad. Yeah, Latino, no heat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if this is the level of promo, I'd let him leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brand, mate. Yeah. Uh, he actually would leave over this in a year and a half. Obviously, this is a work, you know, the thinking is to, <laughs> really? <laughs> is to form a group of disgruntled wrestlers who have been held down. Silver King, La Parker, Psychosis, Seacosis. So this is sows the seeds of the Latino world order. Eh? Can we call uh-huh. them the Luo? <laughs> Luo. <laughs> Luo. I think you'll drop it, so yes. <laughs> Still, Eddie was sent out there to fucking sink or swim, and he did sink. But like a stone. Like yeah. it was like, you're not coming back behind this curtain for 10 minutes. Go, go. Like I would shit myself. So he hadn't gotten the experience to go out there on his own in a segment like this. So I don't blame him. Yeah, sure. Uh, I was just thinking like watching 1998 Eddie in this format. Like I'm just thinking how incredible WWF molded him and got the absolute best out of him. Like realized his potential. Like going, he was nothing huge in the radicals to fantastic comedy segments with China as Latino heat. Yeah. And then infusing the kind of lovable heel shtick into kind of rightful main event world title babyface run in 2004, beating Brock Lesnar, monstrous pop, everybody loves him. But this is what he was in WCW. So good job, WWF. I'm addicted to the satisfaction that I get to tell everybody like you that didn't believe in me, you can stick it up your ass. Kicking off hour two is Horace Hogan and Canyon versus Raven and Perry Saturn. Dave Penzer, can you give us a... Horace and Canyon. (laughs) Raven and Perry Saturn. Raven! Can you think of a single WCW wrestler with one syllable? Because I want to hear your version of that. Ah, this is Sting. Oh, he's good. He's He's cracked. He's good. (laughs) (laughs) I love Perry Saturn's biker getup. You know, it's like Stone Cold Steve Austin if he wasn't from Victoria, Texas, but the blue oyster. (laughs) He had the cap. He had the The shades, mustache, waistcoat, and. He's <laughs> like he's supposed to be our hard man. This is no, no, no. Yeah, Horace, shoot nephew of Hulk Hogan. Immediately they get over Raven and Saturn's odd couple gimmick, shoving Raven and almost eating a pinfall, taking an unwanted tag, bickering, but they are a functioning dysfunctional tag team. Couple of nice suplex spots from Perry. We got a belly to back release. Yeah. Followed up by a T-bone suplex. 
and some Xbox corner kick, corner kick, crap roundhouse kick. Before Raven grabs a chair, no DQ, remember, we see the crowd are more interested in something happening off screen. Probably a fight breaking out. Canyon gets a hair of the dog, bulldog. He grabs the hair, does the bulldog. <laughs> yeah. Onto the chair as Raven pulls an OSC special. He just slaps the chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you sell a chair shot. Raven did like a dropped hold on Kane mm-hmm. and Kane slapped the chair. Sounds about right. Yeah, he was yeah, just yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I w- fucking won't. <laughs> Baby faces hit a tandem power bomb neck breaker combo. It's like, oh, would you trust Horace to give you a power bomb? You trusted Steve to give you yeah. a power bomb. Oh, yeah. He's been in the business for all- <laughs> since Stickity Six. Like. Yeah. <laughs> It was in a bouncy castle as true, well. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say here, yeah, because Canyon is the one who's in charge of the timing. So when he drops, Horace literally just has to drop him down. So like mm. in this one, yeah. I love that Canyon takes control of it. So your neck is safe. Like, yeah. 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 Canyon's really good wrestler, lads. And he's big. Like, yep. like he's a tall guy. He's got a good look. Should have been a bigger deal than he, he was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one. Two and Saturn kicks out. What the fuck? That was a double tag team. It was a tan tag them. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so he can hit the DVD and get the pin. Ha ha! The odd couple wins in eight oh three. Into the Death Valley Driver. Right in the back of the neck. It's over. What do you think? Yeah, I, I just yeah, I I have to say, even though we and we talk about how great. Raven is and he's got a great mind for the business probably his gimmick has been watered down over the years so it's like great in ECW not so good in WCW horrendous in TNA (laughs) (laughs) you know who was in that group like Johnny Deformed and there was like who who else was in Matt Bentley wasn't it (laughs) Matt (laughs) Bentley yeah I wasn't feeling this one bit Uh, yeah great always great to see Canyon always great to see Raven Always great to see Saturn actually come to think of it, but no, I just wasn't interested at all. Here or in the Blue Oyster? (laughs) (laughs) Being forced to dance when you do not want to dance, (laughs) that's comedy. Wolfpack is back causing mass destruction and cutting an in-ring promo. Red and black, Andrew Will, Conan, Sting, Kevin Nash, bringing up the rear, Lex Luger, could be dead in a ditch somewhere. In kayfabe, the Wolfpack came about because of the split Nash and Savage had with Hogan and Bischoff. They were kind of preventing each other from gaining the world title. In shoot, by this time, the end of Will, getting a bit long in the tooth, needed a refresh. So we split them out and you have our kind of first babyface incarnation of the NWO, the Wolfpack. They were fucking over. Ooh. Yeah. Who, who's the odd one out here? Like, it's supposed to be a cool group. Lex, whatever else he is, he will never be cool. And this is coming from his biggest fan. Uh, yeah, literally his biggest fan. He's walking out the three lads, you know, very quite cool. And this guy bringing up the rear, as you pointed out, just smiling. Just <laughs> happy to be here. Yes, basically, he's just he is so thinking lucky. about his paycheck, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or his like bag of pills when he gets back page, <laughs> you know. I did like Shivani. He pulls a Jay Hunter saying, They mean what they say, they say what they mean. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> mean what they say, say what they mean, whatever cliche you want to use. Oh, do you like these sing along promos? Just where the fans can join in. Mm-hmm. So Luger is like, Wolf packs in the house. Sting says, I'm running with the pack because I'm red and black for, for life. life. <laughs> Why would you say it like that in the in the audience? For <laughs> life. Best. Conan says, Hartford and the Wolf Pack are bowdy bowdy and Rowdy Rowdy. rowdy. <laughs> Nash is short and sweet, Hall and Hogan. If you don't run with the pack, you'll get eaten by the pack because the Wolf Pack is just, just too sweet. sweet. And that's literally it. <laughs> 10 on 10. 
Steve, you were watching a bit of Nitro. Right? I my fucking bet is that every single Wolfpack promo is this. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's exact same. So cheap, exact. I mean, DX did the same thing. You know, you had like Road Dog come out and like, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, D Generation X proudly presents to you. It's tag team jumps to the world. The Road Dog, Dizzy James, the Banners, Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws. Yeah, but that In was. Two- a- in 2021, that is 23 years old, and you just recited it verbatim there. Oh, yeah. And I still enjoy it. Yeah. I, yeah. You probably do yeah, as well. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. But that was a ring entrance. I have no issue with catchphrases and being able to sing along or chant along, but then have something to say. Nash would say stuff as well. Oh, would he? Yeah, yeah he'll, he'll give you an extra minute. He yeah. didn't on the last three shows because I watched uh, Nash cut a promo uh, before the Battle Royal in Road Wild. He cut a promo last week and this, and it's literally the same. Like He changes the name of the city. Or <laughs> in the his house. But it was insanely over and it worked. So like keep on doing it until it doesn't, you know? Which is what I think. <laughs> And when the arse falls out, make sure you're not stealing the company. The wolf pack is just too Scott Norton versus Scott Putski. Wanko, hey, hey. Lower those expectations. Oh my god. It's Vincent flagging. Scott Norton, he's facing, holy shit, Scott Putski. Made famous by Reviewway's Scott Putski Award being crazy, Roydy Magoo, as noted in their first review, Ground Zero 97. Putski's got Polish power on his tights. He does. He's got the little bird, the symbol. Yeah, he's got the old Polski power. Yeah. His dad was Ivan Putski, that was his nickname. Should have asked you some, something in Polish. Give us some Polish there, Steve. Any Polish for us? Daya uh, me... Kanapka Shnadanya. Oh, what's that mean? Give me a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They probably don't have rolls and <laughs> <laughs> probably have to be an elected official. Like. <laughs> Wait, I can't slap him. Can you? Can I slap him on yeah, behalf of you? Of cor- like. course you can. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, like, I appreciate it. We now have permission. Nice. To I, Poland. Nice. I knight you <laughs> in the ways of giving the Polish shit. <laughs> Norton no sells his offense and clobbers Putski with a clothesline. Check out Putski's shitty bump. He is awful. He's as much use as a knitted condom. Uh, Power bo- though. <laughs> <laughs> Powerbomb Polak and one, two, three, Shin Jin. That's it in 61 seconds. And he wrestles with it. He has destroyed Scott Putski in the record time here. The going down. Did you like his generic entrance theme, Death Pop? And what was it like? The most generic music, just anything, sing or. Beep, do, that's do, it. Do, do. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> On track, that's please. it. Brilliant. Uh, and it, like they mentioned once that he's second generation, but if they had any intention of pushing him, they would have mentioned more than that, as in they would have talked a bit about Ivan Putsky. Mm. So yeah, he's going nowhere. I mean, like, I didn't see much of him, but what I saw was enough to tell me that I don't need to see any more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an effective match. Yeah. Uh, Norton. Okay. I know he's a former IWGP champion and he's a, like, shoot badass. Hard man. Yeah, like, you know, he would batter us. But That goes for most people. No? <laughs> <laughs> but two points, right? One, why does his onesie go so low that his belly just hangs out? Mm-hmm. It, def- it defeats the purpose of a fucking onesie. <laughs> yeah. And secondly, no star potential in this man what's he doing in the end w o like no putting him in the black and white colors doesn't raise him it brings them down and of course it's the same with brian adams and vincent and the rest of the jobbers that they put in it um and also the fucking song (laughs) did he have the song or this match was so short that I literally got to hear it. No. Like, it, it, it basically never even ended. <laughs> it just kept up. <laughs> they just turned it down a bit. Yeah. Roger <laughs> Deposky. <laughs> Actually, the NWO did get a jobber theme song that wasn't Waka Waka Hey Hey. It was like, Bing Pa, Walla Walla Bing Pa. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it was great.
Speak to me, warrior! And here they come. Again. Waka waka. <laughs> Lads, why are we getting a second Hogan promo, Bischoff and Disciple 2? Uh, he talks about getting rid of yesterday's garbage as Brutus Beefcake <laughs> strokes his chin in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Literally yesterday's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> DDP, you beat up ugly looking freak. Uh, who is out there that Hogan hasn't beat? There's not a war that I can't win and not a warrior I can't beat. The lights flicker. The arena goes dark. The entranceway bathed in blue and red as a police readout siren slash Jimmy Hart's 80s guitar punk plays. Floodlights fill and pyro explodes. The warrior has arrived in WCW. Hogan, no, he sells it like a champ. Mouth gaping open, quivering. Yeah. The That's quivering so lips. That's so stupid. Mm. It's way over the top. No, too much. It it's be. stupid. How are the people in row Z going to see that <laughs> well, Hogan's they can see it quivering. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, Hogan promo and the lights flickering and the song hitting and Warrior coming out. I'm like, this is great. It can only be uphill from this point <laughs> on. Yes, I'm, I was ready. I was pumped. And look at the face of a his, his bottom lip is quivering. And so he's seeing John uh, Where's the rest of your song? <laughs> he just stops. <laughs> <laughs> like he's only halfway down the ramp. <laughs> Talk to me, warriors! Talk to me, warriors. In 1998, internet message boards already had the scoop. We see a welcome back warrior and ultimate NWO sign. Ah, unleash the raging voice, warriors. This should be the easiest layup. The crowd are so hot and ready to cheer. But he speaks in riddles, which confuses the crowd into non-reactions. Uh... Oh, Uke, can you give us... We have a few lines here. Would you mind? Um, so I picked out my favourite three bits. Here. Okay. And you two do the crowd reaction. Okay. Mm. History tells us that a man's legacy is built on the premise that within his life, the moments lived once lived become a piece of history. Yeah. That's the correct crowd reaction. Next one. The virtue of justice unties my hands so that I can continue to fulfil a destiny set in motion by that memorable day years ago. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one. Somehow you conveniently and even eloquently misplaced pieces of your history. No response. <laughs> <laughs> but a perfect parp trombone. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Whoever brought that little farty... I didn't noise. hear that. Oh, splicey. Big time splicey. <sighs> Even eloquently misplaced pieces of your history. That's amazing. Uh, so, yeah, what do you think? What's going this on? It's swirling around. This is the best Ultimate Warrior promo I've ever heard. No, uh, no, I'm not joking. No? I'm not joking. Yeah? It's the most coherent. What I just read there is infinitely more coherent than the nonsense he was coming up with seven years previously. Load up the spaceship with rocket yeah, fuel. Yeah, garbage. Yeah? Garbage nonsense. But that was contained to 25 seconds. This this man, I never thought it was in him. He was able to cut a promo. This is probably what? 18 minutes. You're kidding me. Yeah. Did it oh, just fly by, did it? It honestly did. I would have guessed seven minutes. That's how good this promo was. Congratulations, Jim Helwig. You've done it again. Well, first time. On only time. <laughs> how, yeah, I know you're, you're astonished I just said this. But you need to look deep in your hearts and understand so I am shocked of the words that are coming out of your yeah. mouth because I thought I was going to be the only one oh, to say oh, it. Hey, hey, I really like this 
And Explain yourself, sir. And I, <laughs> I have a feeling it's because over the like 23 years since it's happened, it's been built up. It's been built up. I mean, look, look, like he does talk in riddles and he spends too long to get his points across and they're kind of lost. But at the same time, the fans went mental. And after this was done, I was ready for him versus Hulk Hogan. Job done. If this was 1998, I would have put down money to actually watch it. This is unbelievable. I, <laughs> I can't, I, this is incredible in, in, in the purest form of the word. I was so shocked that when Uka, I was like, holy shit, because I thought I was going to be the only one saying yeah. this. Like I died and needed to be resuscitated watching this. It was unbelievable because they were so hot starting off and then three minutes in, I, I don't care. Stop talking. Hey, how much did this cost? A quarter million? This, every appearance he gets is a quarter million. Money well spent. Oh my God. Hold on, every appearance? Yeah, yeah that's his, for his like five appearances, yeah. Hmm. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> it doesn't make quite as much sense now, but you know. <laughs> but man, I really liked it. For the entire duration. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, I you know, listening you're, to you're it. Separating me. It's like you guys and then me and the internet now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, uh, it cost them so much money uh, and an outbreak. Uh. <laughs> no, Steve's versus the world. I think because I really dislike his WWF promos, this is a normal promo. He talks some bollocks, but he actually makes points where he never used to make points. Yeah, okay, he's not allowed to go 18 minutes again, but... I'm fascinated to, to hear what the fans think. Uh, watch it again. Watch, like... Actually watch it. Watch, sit go, sit it's, through it. I assume it's on YouTube it's somewhere. It's on the network, yeah. It's on the network. Watch it on that the peacock. network. Peacock. Peacock, yeah. So give it the 18 minutes. Anyway, let's see what he can come up with, because I guarantee you this was all ad-lib. So uh, wrap up the old uh, Ultimate Warrior Pro. That is incredible. I disagree vehemently. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. Next week, I intend to launch a revolution not even you can control. I ask you to find the courage. Check it out. Same warrior time. Same warrior place. Same warrior channel. Eh? You like that? The crowd sang along they with it. They loved knew. it. Yeah. There was one point I didn't like Sixies that Batman. he made. He said, I don't want to beat you. That would mean nothing. Yeah, you need to sell, also sell the pay-per-view match. Yes, you need to attack Hogan backstage and do mirror spots and nice things like that. But you still need to sell a pay-per-view. So he made one mistake in 18 minutes. You can't go wrong <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, you're having that. I, I, I agree with that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really like this. <laughs> I said, this sold me on this match. It really did. Were you captivated throughout the entirety? I was captivated enough that I wrote it down word for word. Wow. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any uh, favorite bits in there? Let me introduce myself after eight minutes. <laughs> to those two fools that stand behind you, this dude must be your barber. I, I love that great line. line. Great line. Yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, great yeah, line. Yeah. And psh, psh, whoosh, 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 he's disappeared. A bad <laughs> signal. <laughs> ah, come on. I, I'll tell you the most Ooh. important person in this promo was wasn't Hogan, wasn't Warrior. It was the guy controlling that smoke machine. You fuck that up, the whole thing is ruined. You see when he can't open the door, come on! In one of the most mind-boggling and incredible displays that we've ever witnessed on this program, the Warrior had literally vaporized before our eyes. You're next! It's WCW NWO Thunder, only on the PlayStation Game Console. Choose your competition, pick your weapon, and play Thunder till your thumbs bleed. Feel my power with WCW NWO Thunder. And we're back with match number five. It's a, can you give us a Dave Panzer? Hey, Henning versus D. Malenko. <laughs> I love it. Waka waka. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perfect coming out having a chat with ravishing Rick Rude with a shorn mohawk haircut, barely recognizable in his ill fitting cheap suit and tie. I'd like just looking at Rick Rude here. This is what I think of when I think of WCW WWF wrestlers who have lost their gimmick. They used to be interesting, highly gimmicked, um, all bells and whistles, and now they're just faded grey, grumpy shadows showing up to get paid. Uh, hold on, this is the same Rick Rude gimmick he had at the end of his WWF run. It was terrible in WWF, yeah. 
You oh, could yeah. take the good one, please. <laughs> and by the like cheap suit, ill fitting, and all that. That was the style. You know, ask was it Mark Jindrak in Evolution. <laughs> 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 what a reference! Yeah. Evolution. I, I love how they knew he was going to be cut because whenever they're walking down the road, yeah. he's way at the side. <laughs> there was one word there that you said when you were talking about Rick Rude and a suit and everything, and it was grey. Nitro, it's the greyest show I've ever seen. It's a terrible palette for a show that's meant to be big and colourful and... Uh, Bombastic, fantastic. Bomb- yes, exactly. And it just looks a bit shit. Mm. Still, it's the antithesis of the new generation bollocks. So maybe that's what they were going for when they started. Yeah, mm. that's true. Worth noting, Rick Rude jumped ship to WCW right after Montreal. Rude was working on a per night deal without a contract and was disgusted, livid about the Montreal screw job. Phoned Eric saying, I can manage, I can do whatever, I just want out of here. Ideas started swirling in Bischoff's head, his competitive side flaring, eyes bulging with imagined scandal. <laughs> <laughs> he could do another Lex jumping ship on the first Nitro, another Medusa canning the WWF women's title on WCW television. You were on WWF TV without a contract? Get over here! And that next Monday, November 17th, Raw was taped. So that same night, Rick Rude strolled out on Nitro, being the first guy to appear on both shows simultaneously. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. Mm. What's wrong with the world of professional wrestling is for Vince McMahon to instruct a referee to ring the bell in order to rob Bret Hart of his title. Uh, sadly, Rude couldn't wrestle legally as he took out the Lloyds of London payout after his career was over in the early 90s. Despite feeling much better and seeing how hot wrestling was, he was like, oh, I really want to go back and wrestle again. But he'd only do so if Eric would pay him what his Lloyds of London payout was giving him. And even ATM Eric couldn't justify giving the hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to an almost 40-year-old Rick Rude. Okay. Um, I thought Mr. Perfect also had like a Lloyds of London. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yes, he's, uh, he's the most famous one. Kurt Hennig with the Lloyds of London. Oh, you might have hurt his back on that move. So he'd have a broken tailbone and injured back in the early 90s. He took the insurance company for a spin, saying he couldn't wrestle, so gave me the money, but stayed very active. Like, within months of surgery, he was back being Ric Flair's executive assistant, his henchman, getting physical with wrestlers and that. Lloyds found out, and they saw unable to work was more like almost everything you could do before you got injured, besides having full matches. So it's clear that, okay, you won't earn as much, but you could still earn a very good living, you know? Uh, when he wrestled, he said his back's acting up and used that insurance payout to get him out of the WWF again in 93. <laughs> <laughs> but man, you're taking the piss. Like, he's back as a ref uh, with Luger Yoko in 94, mixing it up with Mark Mero in 95. I, he could wrestle if he wanted to. Uh, Mid-97, he ended up signing with WCW and on guaranteed money, so he dropped the payouts. Okay. Because he got the money. The guaranteed money. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, Mr. Lloyd must be the stupidest insurer in the world. Why is he giving these wrestlers these kind of ironclad insurance payouts? Like, didn't Brett... Oh, cash in on one? He did. And he said it was really difficult for Brett to get it. Like there was a whole inquiry because now they didn't trust wrestlers. Mm-hmm. And so he's really annoyed because he had a stroke and, you know, he was really injured. And, you know, and when he came back to WWE in 2010, um, Lloyds of London had to sign off on that and probably Vince had to give him some money, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's why today Lloyds of London no longer insure wrestlers. It only took them, you know, 40 fucking years <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> they get injured a lot, lads. You can't always get what you want. So I'm happy this week just to sit back and hear what the Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior have to say. And, and I tell you, my apologies to Malenko and to Kurt Hennig, and we need to do justice to this match. Back in the ring, fair balls to him, Hennig in excellent shape. Yeah, looks great. What's he got? Kick, punch, nothing. Whip to the turnbuckle, hold the head, rest, hold submission. Hennig fills his four bump quota with a back body drop. Suplex. Kick the leg out of his leg. <laughs> Flip spot. And belly to back suplex. Time for the finish. Rude cheap shots Malenko with a knee to the back. Jumping axe handle, softening him up for the perfect plex. Sorry, Hennig plex. Ugh. And the three perfect pinches it in 827. And the Hennig plex. This one's over. He's got him. I'll tell you what happened to me when I was watching this match. I saw Hennig come out and then I saw Dino come out. 
And I was like, fuck yeah, this is going to be great. And then I very quickly realized this is not Mr. Perfect of 1990. This is Mr. Perfect of 1998. I was very disappointed. Not good. I, I Yeah, I was the same. I was like, oh, this this could be interesting. Anytime I see Malenko, I think of Jay because, you know, Texas Cloverleaf. Ah, you, know, okay, yeah. you, you, love, you love a bit of that. He's very good. Yeah. I thought you yeah. short, no personality. <laughs> <laughs> James Bond gimmick. Uh, no, nothing much going on here. Question, I, w- I would love to, I'm sure somebody knows the stats. How many NWO matches were won without outside interference? I'd love to know the stats on that. Ooh. I would say less than 1%. <laughs> Well, if people run out during the match, it means we can get more. <laughs> 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 Still to come tonight live. Goldberg defends against the Giant all on TNT. It's amazing how this injury to, to Big Papa Pup has moved around his body. Scott Steiner in ring promo. Waka wahai! <laughs> <laughs> Scott Steiner has half his body taped up, so it looks like a half body cast. He's with the stuff, Buff Bagwell, and Doc Cecil Schwartz, this weird al looking fella dressed as a quack surgeon. So he's a pony doctor. He explains his feigned surgery, saying his elbow bone connected to the shoulder bone, connected to the neck bone, connected to the hip bone, which is why his knee hurts and can't wrestle. And Cecil confirms. His brother, Rick Steiner, has none of it. Show up in a neck brace, a wheelchair, or a gurney for your beating at Fall Brawl. Any Anything make you chuckle? No, like that doctor didn't do it for me. Right on. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that was silly. This one kind of passed me by. No, I, I wasn't offended by it. <laughs> okay. I really like this. Like, I thought it was good fun. They actually did, like, a similar segment at the Road Wild pay-per-view where Rick came out to have a match, called out his brother, and then Buff comes out. Big Papa Pump is actually on a gurney. Buff, he's like, uh, Scott, I don't think you're able to wrestle tonight, are you? And then he puts the mic up to him, and he's lying on the gurney, you know, like, he's got a mask on, and you can just hear him going... <laughs> It's very funny, but I think this is meant to be like a blood feud between brother, like a literal blood feud. So maybe comedy is not the right way to go if you want to make money, (laughs) but I liked it. I brought bro! I'm going to show you who's the best Steiner brother! Come on! It's me! Can you imagine being the mother or the sister of the Steiners living with them? Can you imagine those Those two having, like, yeah, having an argument? (laughs) You know, getting their big bone and just like (laughs) banging it off the walls and everything. (laughs) It must be so trying. (laughs) Match number six. It's a triangle match for the television title. It's Chavo Guerrero versus Chris Jericho versus Stevie Ray. We're going to be seeing. watching Chavo with the stick here and I was like why do I feel that this was your idea Mm. and I looked it up and yeah it was he was at Eddie's house and his kids went around with the stick horse and he was like hey I'm gonna bring this to work they're like yeah okay cool so he uh, he was just saying well it was WCW you can kind of just do what you want and they'll let you do it not like in WWF and so he came out and then even by week two people had kind of got a bit of a following so oh and Eddie was like you know you're gonna have to keep doing this and he's like ah the ribs on me. Yeah, and how's he going to bring it? He can't carry that on. He probably has to check it in when he's on the plane. Oh, it's a different horse. At Road Wild, it was like uh, pink and white and purple. Okay. And this one was black. So yeah, like I'm going to guess that he just goes to like a toy shop and buys a different one every week. It's an investment. Yeah. You know, like he needs to factor that into his budget. <laughs> like, they're not six, free. Six dollar yeah, uh, yeah. hobby yeah. horse. <laughs> <laughs> Lionheart Chris Jericho next. Uh, Steve, what do you got for us? On my copy, the live VHS copy, he came out to his Pearl Jam Even Flow ripoff, which is probably my favourite of all the WCW songs. Okay, so how does Even Flow actually go? So, and how does Jericho's WCW ripoff theme go? But even better, there's a bit of Even Flow where it's like, you know, but this one goes like 
brilliant. <laughs> Jimmy Hart, mate. You've done it. <laughs> three for three here. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. The other half of Harlem Heat. It's Stevie Ray. This opening was hilarious. Like, Jericho is talking with Chavo and he's like, you and me, you and me. Look at the size of him. We're small. He's huge. Two of us batter him. Three, two, one, go. Chavo runs in, gets battered. And then he comes back and Jericho goes, your timing was off. (laughs) Yeah. Brilliant. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Jericho's smarmy hot dogging is second to none. Start of the bout, Stevie Ray hits a lariato to Chavo. Jericho swoops in and does a come on, baby, one foot pose and pin. Like, and immediately eats a super kick to the face. I thought it was brilliant. Cause trying to steal a pin with a slow, gloating cover, leaving him completely exposed to get clobbered. Seconds into yeah. to the match where no one is ready to be pinned. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's exactly what happens. Amazing. Story of the match is Jericho and Chavo team up to two on one Stevie, but the alliance is incredibly flimsy. Pin attempts, pulling each other off. Boom. Uh, Last long enough to hit a dual drop kick from the same top turnbuckle. It's pretty good. Referee Mickey J, are you in position? Yes. Okay, Stevie Ray inadvertently mows him down, cheats himself by smacking Jericho with a blackjack, a foreign object from his smelly jocks. <laughs> uh, running by jo- Or he just whipped out his massive Mickey <laughs> <laughs> and slapped him in the face with it. Yeah. We'll do it again. I, I just yeah, I have to say the giant, aka Big Show, aka New Year's baby runs in. <laughs> and uh, a- aka the greatest commentator in, 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 in AW Dark Elevation <laughs> history. <laughs> and choke slam Stevie Ray. And my God, the strength. Because Stevie Ray was having none of this. He didn't want to go anywhere. He probably jumped two feet and Giant had to do the rest. He's I was monster. so impressed by that. It's probably the best thing I've ever seen him do. Yeah. Legitimate. Oh, he did a moonsault once, right? Um, but the second best thing I've ever seen him do. Posted for Jackhammer? Is that any good? It's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, he did a top rope leg drop when he was doing the Hulk Hogan gimmick on SmackDown. The showster. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but, top rope. No, I don't yeah. care. He, he dressed up like oh, a baby God. one time. <laughs> <laughs> he dressed, okay, third best thing was this choke slam. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Run in by the giant. BV delayed choke slam, and all three are down. Whoever gets to their feet first will win the match and the TV title. Jericho pulls Mickey J to distract him from Chavo getting to his feet, uh, and he falls back down. So he believes Jericho's done it. Chris Jericho retains the TV championship. It was Chavo that got to his feet. Now the king of all loopholes strikes again. In 524, le champion du petit héron. <laughs> le champignon. <laughs> <laughs> the mushroom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what'd you think? Why did Chavo roll out of the ring at the end? Oh, he got up to his feet. He thought he won. And so he's like, ah, he crumpled. Oh, okay. It makes sense now. I just thought he was a complete fool. (laughs) Well, yeah, he is. (laughs) (laughs) But otherwise, yeah, not much going on. Okay. Uh, Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Jericho's great, though. He is great, yeah. This match wasn't good. I don't want to even talk about it. But Jericho, his character and his wrestling was a highlight on the show. The penultimate matchup is a US title match. It's the champion Bret Hart versus Diamond Dallas Page. Oh my god, it was like, <gasps> what a matchup. Bret coming out to his WCW rip off heart attack theme, Steve. <laughs> so uh, in WWF, you have. <laughs> okay, and in WCW, he has. I didn't even hear that song. What I heard in this was the Bon Jovi. You know that thing where he like puts the tube in his mouth? (laughs) The Peter Frampton. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you feel? (laughs) You're not going to have all that watermelon, Mr. Frampton. (laughs) So yeah, I honestly couldn't even tell you how the song goes. I just know. (laughs) That's literally all I heard. I wish you could see that. Actually, he had a heart attack rip off something that was way closer to his WWF theme. 
by John Jimson. <laughs> Should have gone like Jin 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 Yeah, you know, hot potato title. Luger was a U.S. No, Brett was U.S. champion this time last week. Luger gave him guff about it, and Luger beat him. But Brett won it back on Thunder. Uh, so all is right with the world. DDP's hot that the NWO beat him down before their match a month ago. So he's goaded Brett into a return bout tonight. DDP on offense, leading to a diamond cutter attempt, and Brett scurries outside. Heel Brett brawls and uppercuts DDP's taint. <laughs> Small package? Yeah. Package. package. Brett then snake eyes DDP in the corner. Nice. And tells referee Nick Patrick, hey, he was forearmed. Not to his dick. And he kind of just accepts it. Yeah. I don't know how referee Nick Patrick got his job. He's fucking massive. Like he's a bit, he's very tall and he's wide. Because you want wrestlers to look big, you <laughs> yeah. know? So that's why you get Earl Hebner. Fonzie. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So it, it's shocking, you know? Yeah, it works in UFC because they need to step in and pull off the wrestlers or pull off the fighters, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Never mind. Uh, Brett signature backbreaker. Signature pinpoint elbow from Brett's rope. Follows up with a gorgeous safe pile driver. And then he taunts the crowd with a disgruntled, what? He's like, what? And I was like, wow, you're such a mid-carder. It's so sad. Yeah. Like for the past five years you've been the biggest thing in WWF you know you carried the new gen on your back if you think of how bad the new gen was how bad WWF was when he got it versus when he gave it away at the end of 97 before their massive boom and like here he is just give me so why did they (laughs) carny like wait like why would they take like at the end of 97 he was one of the hottest acts in wrestling and they turned him heel so quickly they didn't know what to do he was the centerpiece of the most famous event in wrestling history. And then his first thing to ever do was a parody of this? Well, he, I th- he came in as a face and uh, uh, and so they just turned him into th- this. Like. <sighs> it's, it's a shame because like he's still really good, you know what I mean? Like As a wrestler, mm. fantastic. If anybody knows in the diamond cut him, it's DDP, the master. Oh. Brett Stevie Ray's DDP, ref bump, foreign object nooks and clocks DDP. He interestingly deposits the taped nooks in Paige's trunks and even flops him over himself for a two count. Like he almost So weird. Mm. He could have just pinned him. Brett slaps on a sharpshooter, but Paige is too close to the ropes. DDP hits a diamond cutter, but Hart's too close to the ropes. He motions to resolve that, but Brett holds his head, claiming he's been illegally hit. Referee Nick Patrick reads DDP the right act and almost gets me too reaching into Dallas's trunks <laughs> <laughs> and whips out the tape nooks. Villainous crafty foreigner Brett wins by DQ after 12.02. Throw it out! He's going to disqualify DDP! What do you think, Ooh? A Solid Brett match. The gimmick that Brett is displaying here. Yeah, crafty mid-card heel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah never thought you'd see the day. I quite enjoyed it. You know, maybe not. No, it is. A lot of it is because it's Bret Hart doing it and it just seems a bit odd. You know, the Eddie Guerrero cheat to win spots, mm. you know. But I quite that's it. a face gimmick. Did Eddie turn that into a face gimmick, though? Because he was so entertaining. Did Jericho would do that as heel, you know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. sneaky. Or would Jericho just whip them out, punch him, and then put them back in his own jocks and pin him? Yeah, maybe. Like, it was very convoluted here because mm. Bret was trying to get it be pinned at one point i don't know what he was doing he got confused maybe there is no chance that the fans their live knew what was going on Mm. like if he pulled ddp over him and then like pushed him off and said hey i was hit and that's the finish of the match but they went another five Mm. minutes or whatever so it meant nothing it was a that would actually be much better Mm. yeah but yeah absolutely solid solid match Mm. Uh, anything to be one? No, pretty much the same. Love Brett, love DDP. The match was an okay mid card TV match. I thought the finish was stupid. Uh, I have a good bit of scar for you. Oh, but it's um, Three days later, Vince had his infamous AOL chat. So it's 1998. And he, he's on a message board typing. You know, he's WWF Welcome. Live too. And they just asked him a ream of questions. And it's like, is Bret Hart coming back? 
not at the rate he's declining in WCW. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's a bad. great burn. Uh, Mr. McMahon, are you and Bret Hart in cahoots against WCW? And then Vince says, Bret is my secret agent. However, not a very good one. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Honestly, it's really worth a read because they lose connection after 10 minutes or something. And he's just talking to himself, going insane. Fucking uh, yeah, bastards. Really, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, really angry uh, that they're not. I made on. the BBC. <laughs> 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 Goodbye. 42 and a half minutes of wrestling down. One match left because it's time for your Monday Nitro murder. And <laughs> mean Gene, play us in. Let's get ready to run. It's your murder event. You have to see this. <laughs> yes, a special ring announcer Michael Buffer earning his minimum 25k wow. up to 100k for two minutes work. Who thought of this? Easy, baby. Like he adds zero. Like, nothing. Uh Uh-huh. Bischoff was saying, hey, it's not just to give it a big fight feel, because he is the voice of the big boxing events, but it's like, hey, we can impress our pay-per-view providers we work with. Say, hey, look, we've got this big guy. We're a big company. Uh, Like, as a business marketing strategy move. Mm. Did it work? No. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, let's get ready to rumble. Just saying those five words, they're trademark, copyrighted by him. So it'll cost you at least 25 grand for him to say it. Uh, Midway to license this for ready to rumble in perpetuity. It gave him 100 million. Yeah. Hold on. The boxing game called... Midway? No, no, Midway the re- <laughs> Midway the video game company. Okay, you mean Mortal the comp- Kombat guys? You yeah. you mean the company that went out of business? That's the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I was just double checking. Yeah. <laughs> just from licensing his trademark, Buffer earned over four hundred million dollars. <laughs> He's the best carny ever. It's, uh, you know what? I take it all back. I respect you for your hustle, sir. <laughs> Uh, let's get ready to rumble! It's your main event. NWO's The Giant versus WCW's Goldberg. Paul White flanked by Ed Leslie. Love that they're having a chat. Play strangling a fan's mask. I love that. Um, oh, sorry. Wanka <laughs> wanka. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, have we heard this song a dozen times today? It must have been. The number 95 jersey. How about that? Worn by this man when he played for the Georgia Bulldogs. Can I just, just uh, on Goldberg's entrance, one of the most famous wrestling entrances yeah, it's really in cool. history. I loved it. Amazing entrance, just so good. I will say, and I know you disagree, but his WWE team was better than this one. I agree. He agrees, I don't. I agree. I think the WWE team, it just hits my ear better. Yep. Uh, this one, the way that it goes up the keys or the notes, it just doesn't sound as nice to me. Interesting, because the 2003 Jim Johnson distortion, I find really nasty. All I think is like Matt Stryker's theme. It's like... That's cheap, cheap, <laughs> like the Saint Anger theme music. Ah, <laughs> Saint Anger! <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I love his WCW theme. I think it's like an impending invasion and it's classical music. Mm. So it's like it's war like is coming it's upon you. It's big. Yeah. Mm. You know, like it's bombastic. It's Stephanie Grand. And, no. uh, you know, you can either have waka waka hey hey, or you can have this big yeah. orchestra telling you that doom is coming. Or you got like a dragon that snorts smoke and breeds fire and... You have this like blitzkrieg of all the flashbangs going off, and then he's got rah, 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 with his muscle. It was so fucking cool. Holy shit. Giant Goldberg coming up right now. Every place we went, what do we see? Goldberg t shirts. See it everywhere. <laughs> Pearl Harbor from the front from Giant. <laughs> and then it dawns on me. The neck of WCW slagging WWF for their like 10 second main event while putting on Goldberg in their main event. Yep. Who are you fooling? Sky Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Big slam to Goldberg. No sell. Beep. <laughs> Crowd go mental. Big Willie pops back up and 
body slams the giant. Right? Lose their shit. No sell. Can he do it? Oh my oh, god! Yes, he can do it. Crowd lose their minds as the Mastodons reset and size each other up again. Dip outside to get Ed Leslie involved. Hold on, just before you go any further, I was watching a VHS rip. And as you know, VHS tapes are three hours long. Nitro was three hours long with a little bit of an add-on. My feed ended <gasps> as soon as they jumped outside. Ooh. And so I was like, on to the network, lads. And that's how I watched the <laughs> end of the match. <laughs> mm. So much for watching. Why didn't they tape at long play? You get oh, like six, six hours, hours then. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, but it looks shit. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Even more <laughs> shit. <laughs> Dip outside to get Ed Leslie involved. Dip back inside with a suplex. No sell that. Beep. Spear. Gonna jackhammer him. Bum rushed by Ed Leslie for the DQ. Oh. Let's see what he's all about now. The disciple. El Dizzy Hogan gets jackhammered. <laughs> And let's not answer that question if he could jackhammer giant by having Scott Hall bum rush the ring. Outsider made Kevin Nash too. Goldberg spear. Nash no sells that. <laughs> <laughs> and Diesel and Goldberg jaw jack to close Nitro. Nash is up in his face. And ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time on Nitro. Uh, By the think? way, the like timekeeper going mental during this <laughs> en- entire thing, having TNA flashbacks He's twice on this show, getting paid by the bell. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you go to mass and like the priest is yeah, doing yeah, the yeah, like yeah. thing, yeah. and you you know like it's normally done by these like old ladies, yeah. and you can tell the ones that are really into yeah, it because yeah. you know like, it's like normally like ding 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 ding, but the real church heavies. Oh, ba-ding, 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 and it just goes on for fucking ages that's what this was it was a really old church lady who was proving her love to God by going mental on the bells <laughs> I, I, I assume most of our listeners don't go to Irish church I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> something, something, something tells me yeah what do you think of this match Eden, Eden going? it was perfect it was like Goldberg Lesnar at Wrestlemania 33 you know, that's all we want from... And it's not just a Goldberg match. It can be any other match. Not all matches need to be 25 minutes long. It's okay. I argue most shouldn't be. Yes, a- agreed. You know, it's okay to have a short match and do something that pops the crowd. This popped the crowd. Goldberg popped the crowd. It was fun. It was, whatever, three and a half minutes bell to bell, something like that. Did the job, did what it was supposed to do. Perfect. I agreed, actually. This was just the high points of the match, the highlights. So the match was all highlights. They cut out the rest holes. So <laughs> yeah. well, thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. As a match, you know, it's too short to say it's good or bad. As a segment, as an angle to build to something, the crowd were mental. They were white hot in 1998 for Goldberg, for Big Show, for Kevin Nash, for the Big Schmoz. So yeah, like, it was an awesome way to end the show. Were they white hot for Waka Okay, let's take it to the other man. Welcome to the Aftermath. Mr. OC, what did you think of your first schnifter of 1998, Nitro? A decent show. Better than I expected. Decent Bret Hart match. Great to see the NWO, though. Pretty sure I'm going to get sick of that. Um, <laughs> great to see Goldberg. Nice sprinkle of bollocks. And the Warrior segment wildly exceeded my wild expectations. Mm-hmm. So I can't complain. I th- This was a pleasure. Wow. Oh. Big thumbs up there. Uh, as someone who watches a lot of like modern wrestling, like modern day Raw, Smackdown, <laughs> AEW. <Sadomasochist>. Um, Gip, <laughs> man. <laughs> this was a breath of fresh air. There's nothing in wrestling that is a fraction as hot as Goldberg was. Nothing as hot as Hogan was. Nothing as hot as the Wolfpack and especially Kevin Nash. Loved it. The wrestling, disappointing. There was nothing particularly great. Cruiserweights don't get the love that they should, because if you watch modern wrestling, 
you can see that loads of it came from like this type of wrestling and obviously the guys here watch Japanese wrestling and Dynamite Kid and stuff like that but you can see it all over modern day wrestling things that I disliked about the show the NWO theme all over <laughs> have to give every wrestler has to have their own theme only when you come out as a group can you have <laughs> um, I think everyone can have their own theme but they just pipe in the like fa 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 life you know <sighs> yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah you know? sure deadly the thing that I disliked the most about the show is the pacing of it I watched Nitro last week and it's the exact same the first hour and a half it's all promos and by the time you get to the end of it you're like just stop fucking talking <laughs> and give me some wrestling and then the second half of the show was like okay we're going to give you the matches that we built up but we're going to give you six matches in a row and so by the time you get to the fifth and sixth match you're like oh Jesus <laughs> give me a promo to break it up <laughs> yeah. and so the pacing is all wrong you know like mm. mix it up is better but overall very much liked the show it was fun going back to watch something that I didn't really get to watch and like you Steve I thought the warrior thing on week one was a hit we'll see where it goes no we know where it goes it's it's fucking dog <laughs> shit but you know <laughs> but week one thumbs up and the show overall thumbs up hmm. yeah, overall thoroughly entertaining I thought rather too long three hour nitro because there's a lot of a lot of replays breathers and inconsequential matches uh, I was just thinking you really need some jobber matches they have too many stars and they don't want anyone to job so everyone just you know run in and uh, so everyone saves face but no time for jobbers when you're this deep in the attitude yeah. era of monday night war by the way last week's nitro had five title matches wow yeah and this had what two two yeah yeah, really? US and TV. Oh, the three with the world title. Yeah, so, so three, yeah. yeah. yeah so they're burning the candle at both ends. I yeah. mm. uh, thought it did its job wanting me to watch Fall Brawl to actually see. To like, see Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah. actually, I do want to see him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I thought he shit the bed, but like, I, I want to know how they course correct at Fall Brawl. Like, they do fix things, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Find out next time on Who is Doing. Yeah, so that'll do it for this week on OSW Review. What do you think of that one? A return to form. I thought we shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like the Warriors, you know. <laughs> oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. What do you think? Great fun. Had yeah. loads of crack. Can't wait to do more of this. Oh, yeah, that's one. I oh, Jesus, I want to see all of these guys again. I'm glad we did this a more gentler thrust into WCW before the pay-per-view because the pay-per-view would be jam-packed. So this way we get to lay the groundwork first enjoy the world set before us and then power on through to the other side so this strikes the first part of the five part ultimate warrior in wcw story arc nitro august 17th his debut next up we have the pay-per-view fall brawl 98 the warrior and war games then the ultimate warriors one and only film credit 1993's firepower then nitro october 12th that's where the warrior tags with sting ah the uh, blade runners oh the freedom fighters <laughs> <laughs> and finish it off with the <laughs> pay-per-view halloween havoc 98 versus hulk hogan yes that one for that paper gonna be amazing no it's not <laughs> so you can watch all of our episodes fuck free of charge and imax 43 full screen at awesomereview.com and if you're feeling spicy jaunty some lovely uh, Subway mega meat. Mega meaty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully not a big bang of ranch from your underarm. <laughs> 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 oh, you can watch some uh, exclusive Nogu film reviews, TV shows, and other bits and bobs and whatnots and what have you. And you can do that by joining Nogu at nogu.oswreview.com. That might be my worst uh, plug ever, <laughs> but there you they go. They just get better every oh, show. So good. So it's goodbye from V1. Hey, Gabu. And always E. Hey, and myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
even eloquently misplaced pieces of your history.